what's up everyone uh welcome back to the deceptive lab this your boy freeze and today i'm just going to talk a little bit about how i'm preparing for or right now i'm getting ready to prepare for a leaderboard event but just how i prepare for big events in general and if you saw my trip to con pre um, preparation event uh one of the big things that i always do is I always try to plan my attack in regards to how am I going to buy my bundles. Uh, if there's an event that you're spending money on, then this is this is this is the video that it, where I kind of talk about how to use those tactics and try to try to make sure that you are uh, capitalize on your coin usage pretty much. So for me, depending on depending on how hard I plan plan on playing on day one depends on how I'm gonna go about my bundles so for me typically a Friday is gonna be really busy I buy my bundles while I'm completely full on um, on fuel cells and and I try to go buy the ones I try to go buy the 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 attack bundles the total attack bundles and so typically what I'll do is I either buy two twenty dollar packs or I buy a forty dollar pack for most events uh, I'm going for forty K this go around I don't really want to want it to take all weekend so for me I think what I'm gonna do is either I'm either going to go buy my bundles on Saturday or I'm gonna go buy them split them up $20 a day so $20 Friday $20 Saturday uh, if I do the $20 bundles then I'm gonna say all right I'm done I'm home for the day this is when I'm gonna start actually playing and when I actually have the time to sit down, focus, and play hard. But one of the things I'm going to go through today is look at my teams and how I'm going to do my team setup. So let's go ahead and head to the battlefield. All right, so earlier today, I went through and I started rearranging some of my teams. Um, and I'll just walk through. So I, I'll always leave my, my war team in that, in that number one slot. Uh, just because I plan on still doing wars, and granted, I might switch some of these bots out, but this is the, this is my core team that I use in most wars, so that I can try to use them over the course of the day. Now, I will actually put these bots into other spots, uh, as you'll see as I go forward. But I try to keep my teams relatively small. I try to have like two or three bots that I know. Typically, I try to keep a bot that I know I can solo with. And then I'll keep some support pieces. Uh, and typically what I'll try to do is find those support pieces that actually work well with that bot. So like in this case, I've got Impactor. Um, typically I can solo zone 13 with him. Uh, if I need the backup from Onslaught, I want to have a ranged option to come in there and try to help out with the damage if need be just to keep from timing out or just to keep from uh, just in case I get into trouble. But typically what I'll do, I try to run a solo or a duo. Uh, Impactor is going to have Reflector with them. So, you know, that'll help if I need, if for health reasons, um, that I need the health boost. So I try to do that for each one of my squads. Same thing, Sentius Malice, same concept. Sentius Malice with a ranged attacker and a healer. Uh, should get me through most zones for Sentius typically I can get through zone 14 but I don't try to push the boundaries too hard during events because I feel like events always ramp up the they kind of ramp up the difficulty a little bit it seems like sometimes so I'm very cautious um, in this particular case I'm running Ramjet and typically I run him as a sacrifice bot but because he has such good range one of the things that I try to do is get him as far uh, down the battlefield as possible and then Astro Train can come in there for additional damage uh, since you know I, I suspect that these bots could possibly get into trouble and get killed on the back half of the uh, on the back half of the uh, base design then I, I drop Motor Master and I kind of de delay drop Motor Master in case I need him because if I got a delay for him then what I would do is just try to get that power boost to um, while I still have Ramjet and Astro Train uh, standing to do as much damage to the back half of that base as possible. Optone and, and, and Scourge I use for 
uh, that AOE try to clear a path and then Ripper Snapper can walk up there and do do his thing um, you know late in the battles and, and try to get him you know to where he's not visible and try to attack the HQ Deathsaurus kind of the same thing like I was talking about with um, same concept I was talking about with Ramjet I get him out there and try to get him as much distance as possible plus he's you know he's done and everything on the way anyway drop astro train in in this case um, blitzwing is who I use as the backup for some AOE damage just in case I don't clear clear everything up on the back half or even the middle half of the base if they have some ranged weapons that are attacking me while I'm at the HQ uh, Megatron I kind of use to you know you know what Megatron does you use him to get the team to follow and then I just use tarantulas to clean up some of the back half of the base uh, get some of those defenses cleared out while blast off sits in the background uh, he's got crater maker installed so it'll just allow them to take out that back half defenses all right then I got flame war who was uh, who are still gonna use as a sack bot and so since I'm using a sack bot in this case fell back I bring down there for the stun and then black arachnia for the cleanup part And then tantrum I kind of use since he's since he's a you know pretty strong tank. Uh, sometimes I'll use him in like a sacrifice type strategy. Uh, then scavenger I can use for some AOE. And then I've got cutthroat to kind of back everybody up, uh, throwing down his smoke bombs. And I also got him. I actually wind up if you saw my my five star uh, my five star bot crystal Kraken video, the last one I made, uh, the combat bot one. Um, that five star combat I wound up getting was blowpipe and I just recently put him on cutthroat uh, and I just recently put the alchemist prime core on him so the, uh, with the amount of damage that he does and I'm actually going to pull it up real quick with the amount of damage that he's doing uh, 701.5 that kind of gives him some some pretty good regeneration for all of his attacks and usually he'll survive a battle like that even, even with two other cons and then here I use sacrifice with Lugnut and I just use all the minions from Soundwave and Gnaw to kind of just just chew things up with, without actually getting direct contact on my bots and I add hook in there for some additional healing plus I want to get some extra some extra uh, healing out of him anyway and get him some extra XP And then here was kind of interesting. So Megatron and Thrust, both of them um, set it up so that you're just targeting defenses. So a lot of times I'll use Beast Wars Megatron to take the initial layer and put a shield around the bots uh, as they try to go basically shoot at anything that's shooting at you. Thrust I can use for the same thing and you can kind of bring Dirge over the top to get to the back half of defenses and hack them. Here I use Blot to use him for protection, and then Skull Smasher uh, can clear out long, long range things. And I keep mentioning that I want to get the long ranged areas, um, so I try to get anything downfield. And then obviously with, with his ability, you can catch anything this in a line and try to just soften everything. Uh, Cybertron Starscream, I believe, has. Uh, I believe that he has Crater Maker on him so he can kind of stand back a little bit and then you can also use him to one shot anything that hasn't been completely taken out by Skull Smasher. Alright so I haven't done anything with these last two teams yet so what I plan to do is I'm going to run all of those teams with the exception of my war team I'm going to run them earlier and then these last two slots I'm going to go take for some of my um, some of my solo bots and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick in all of these four star bots that I've been collecting I'm going to stick them in there so they can get power level and this is how I primarily go about this is how I primarily go about leveling my bots and I just keep doing that in, in larger events until they get ready and you'll notice that a lot of them 
they're starting to get up and level. Like I got Star Scream up there. I, I maybe got him a couple of weeks ago. I just leveled him up. He's coming up close to 50. He's at 45 right now. You know, so on and so forth. I'm going to do the same thing. But I usually want to pick out a couple of targets. So like Hook, obviously I'm trying to get, you know, him leveled. So I'll spend a lot of time leveling Hook this weekend. Uh, but I'll just use one bot that I want to level. A lot of times I would use Sentius Malice. But I'm not going to use him as much this time. But because, you know, I've got him maxed out. So I want to try to use Impactor as one of my primary uh, solo bots that I continue to use. And what that does is that allows me to save some coin usage because I'm using, you know, 40 coins or less to bring in pack to back time and time and time again. Uh, and I also, I think for me this time, I'll probably use the Golden Lagoon on Ramjet and I'll just power level a bunch of my lower cons. And I'll do that until all of my teams have recovered that I just showed you previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the battlefield and we can take a look and see how these teams perform. I always like to do this the day before a big, big event just so I can get a feel for each of the teams and make sure that that's a team that I'm willing to deal with on the battle uh, on the actual battlefield. So I'm gonna cut myself out of the screen and we'll play for a bit. All right, so like I said, I'm going to skip past that war team. So for me, I, tr I primarily like to play in zone 13. And the reason for that is I don't like the idea of dropping battles that I should win. I'd rather get some points and no points. And I, 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 honestly, when I'm only using two or three teams, like a lot of these guys, I can solo in zone 13 and zone um, maybe zone 13 or 14. But I'll, I, I typically pick 13 just to make sure I'm getting the most points available. Now, when you're practicing, like I always practice in just normal battles, one of the things you got to consider is that you do have the Titan available to you in a normal battle, but you're not going to have that Titan in an event. So for me, I just, I, I, I typically, in Zone 13, typically I can solo with Impactor. I got him in Ability 11. So I'm just going to keep trying to do that. And I shouldn't end up needing Reflector or Onslaught. But if I do, then they'll be available. If I don't use them, then I have the opportunity to use them later on to try to get more points when I go into my team 13, team 14. So there we just solo, solo, solo. I love it when I'm using Impactor and Swoop comes out because he's going to just send that damage and I'm going to absorb that damage and redistribute it uh, on offense. And so it shouldn't be too long here before this uh, HQ comes down. Actually taking me more ability attempts than I wanted. Alright, so I'm pretty comfortable with that team. I didn't even have to bring out Onslaught or Reflector. So I'm going to say that I'm going to put that on my list of teams that I think I'm good with. All right, let's see. So next team. Same thing. I'm going to be doing the exact same concept with Sentius Malice. And I'm just going to run him and... We'll see where we go. Uh, possibly I wind up getting an opportunity to not use my other box. And then I can use them later on to try to keep powerful teams on the on the board. And then especially because I get to keep my two healers. That's why I use them in case I run into some tough bases. But if not, I can use them on other teams. Like I know on that one team I had Hook. Oh, excuse me, I had Shockwave, I believe, on one of the teams. And I was like, well, if I want to use another healer, then I can use my four-star or five-star reflector just because they're a little bit more powerful. All right, so it looks like this one's coming along fine. 
Uh, the, he did get stunned a couple of times. That's a little bit of a pain because, as you can see, if you've been watching my content, I actually changed around some of my power core. So now I got Quintus on Sentius Malice, and I also have that five star Pterodactyl on Sentius Malice, and I move Amalgamous over to my uh, Impactor, my five star Impactor, just because I feel like I finally built him up to a point where he's good enough to compete uh, at the same level that Malice is competing at. Alright, so all, all of these I'm doing in Zone 13 right now. I might find a couple of teams out of here that I think I can use in Zone 14. But, then again, you know, like I said, it's always to me about making sure you have all your points. Alright, so in this particular case, I think I can probably bypass all of these these outpost bots. So I'm a, ooh, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to bring out Ramjet. And I actually put him in the wrong spot. So let me see if I can work my way around that. I'll work my way up to the next level. And I accidentally also drop Astro Train. So I'm just going to fly him over. And one of the things that I was saying earlier is because if you got a lot of stuff in the back half, drop that third bot and just get some extra power up there so that you can bring down that headquarters really quickly. So that's why I bought Motor Master along with these two because I want to I want to I want to bring stuff down fast because I'm taking damage that entire time by skipping past all of those defenses. And like I've been saying, this is not necessarily the way everybody has to go do their um, their large events. This is this is the strategy I've been taking lately, just because I want to get as much XP as possible, and I want to get as many battles as possible every time I step onto the battlefield. Yeah, I just uh, and I, you know, at one point I was using full teams just because I wanted to try to add more and more points up there for my team in one shot but since I know that I'm going to be playing back to back to back battles like that then that's when I try to condense my teams a little bit so in this case uh, it's not the best matchup I could think of for uh, this particular team so what I'll do is I actually drop Scorch first and I'll just try to create myself a path because I'm trying to see if I can avoid triggering a lot of these outpost bots uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case but I can try to at least minimize it so that I only wind up popping like one bot maybe but then again I might not pop in I might be able to do this with just Scourge so let's see how it goes because right now he's walking past everything and I still got plenty of ability points left and so it looks like I might be able to pull this off with just scores. So one of those things that you got to look at, you really got to look and see what you got going on on the battlefield. Because in that particular case, I could have easily had to start out with um, Octone, but I decided not to do that because I felt like it might be, it might be a passing opportunity there. And sure enough, it was. But if I did use that whole team, I would just try to go use uh, both of those bots, Octone and uh, Scorch, for their pathing or for their AOE, excuse me, as opposed to pathing like I just did. And then if I really get in the jam, Ripper Snapper will be there to clean up. All right, so we got another, we got another low flying bot and Death Saurus. And then I'm gonna bring in Astro Chain to try to try to take on some of that additional da damage at the tail end. And so in this case, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I got outposts out there hanging in the back. For some reason, my screen is being really touchy today, so I keep sending these bots out when I don't intend to be. But it's all right because I'm sending Death Source all the way to the end. I'm gonna check who the outpost bots are. I feel comfortable with that, so I'm going to go ahead and send Astro Train. And the difference between Ramjet, because Ramjet, typically, uh, I have him 
with his fire damage, kind of slowly tearing everything apart. Um, you know, Deftorus took out that entire left hand side of that of that of that map. All right, so it looks like I'm still getting into a little bit of trouble. Astro trains down. So this is why I bought in Blitzwing. So that I might be able to do a little bit more damage on the tail end. Uh, right now, I'm still taking a lot of damage. So that's a little concerning just based on the build of that particular, of that particular base. All right, so that might be, I'll, I'll probably run that one again to see if that's one that I want to test. Not, not right now. Uh, just because I like to try to keep teams that are really, really good, regardless of base build. Uh, that one kind of got me hung up a little bit. So it's a couple of things you can do. You can always send a bunch of different uh, bots in there behind it, just as an insurance policy. Um, right now, I'm just practicing to see what I can get from my core of those three bots. But yeah, so it's like, it's a, it's a bunch of different ways you can go about it. I, I'm just, I just always start off with the three and if I start to notice that, hey man, that team's not performing so well, then maybe I can go in there and add some other stuff. Like another example, uh, this isn't probably the best base for this particular team. But since I got them out here, I'm going to run them anyway. So this time I'll just kind of just run Tarantulas in order to get those first sets of outpost bots pop. And then I'll drop Megatron and blast off behind them. Just to try to clear up some of the stuff down here on the bottom. And it'll be a little bit slower than some of my other battles, but that's okay because at the, end of, at the end of the day, I'm still gonna be able to take down this base pretty easily. All right, let's see what I got up next. So yeah, I always try to kind of come up with a strategy. And typically, the strategies that I use in other elements of the game, like in this case, like I said, it's gonna be uh, a sacrifice strategy, possibly. Yeah, in this case, it'll probably be good because some of my outposts are pretty close together at the top. And so for me, I'm just gonna go use Flame War use her special ability get those two outposts out and then after that, I will use Felbat and I'll use his his stun ability to kind of keep those uh, combat I mean those outpost bots in place And then I can actually use his ability a couple of times to keep some of the defenses from, from lighting me up. Now, I don't like his his damage per second, Felbats I'm talking about. But he can still get up the battlefield uh, quite a bit and make path his way over to the HQ. And there we go. The HQ comes down. All right, let's see who's up next. Now this one I tried a little bit earlier. So a lot of times I've seen people just go with a tantrum and use him as the sack bot. And then I just wanted to give him somebody who can actually provide good damage. So I put two options behind him. But it looks like everything's going to be at the top of the screen. So I'll just drop the whole team. Try to see if I can clear this stuff up quickly. 
down at the bottom. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and use them and put them in the sacrifice spot. But I'll throw some smoke down to keep them from taking too much damage. And then everything that's out of your normal reach, I can just go in there and use the AOE effect up there from, from Scavenger. And the base comes down. Looked like somebody delivering a package for me in there, so had to check that out real quick. All right, so here, lug nut, we kind of popped the outpost box. And like I said, the, the strategy that I'm trying to use here, I'm trying to keep these teams small. Now, for lug nut, I've got lug nut's mace up there, so I know he's not going to take any, a lot of damage. So as swoop kind of comes around there. I'm just going to not deploy another bot. I don't want him taking, giving damage to my other bots. But then I'll just go ahead and throw my minion bots out there. And then I'll just put them a healer in the back so they're not taking as much damage. Another good thing is when I got hooked up here, I actually, because I had multiple I had, uh, of my SG Ravage, I got him in there running around behind these guys to add a little bit of ranged attack to the already pretty strong minion attack. Plus, I'll get some, some additional coverage from the smoke. I think in this case, I got my three star up there because I got the two, three, and four. I think I put the three star on the hook for the time being until I can go get uh, until I can go get Shroot like I already got Shroot on Reflector and in, on, at the 5 star so my well, 4 star Shroot I believe it is on 5 star Reflector at least until I can get another 5 star healer so yeah I'm pretty cool with how that turned out the first time I tried to do it I tried to do it without a healer it didn't go as well as I liked, so I added one of my healers. Plus, it's one of the bots that I'm leveling uh, over this weekend anyway, so it does help out to give him some additional XP without running a full team. Alright, so I'm still going to go in zone, zone 13, even though it says it's very hard. And I think a lot of it's just gameplay, just uh, which strategy you want to use with your team. Like I said, this is practice for me. I like to practice as much as I can before a big event like that. So I'm not dropping points during the event. I'd rather drop points during the or drop during the regular battle than, than to lose during the actual event and have to go do things over again. But I just use Beast Wars Megatron. Try to get all of my bots over to the, the actual defenses as opposed to attacking you know um, like the re resource uh, farming stuff you know I don't want them attacking uh, I don't want them attacking you know energon harvesters and stuff like that I want them attacking defenses so I can get them off the battlefield and so for me I like that as a good partnership with Thrust. Uh, and I didn't talk about that because I made a video, a con highlight video about Thrust, but I didn't I didn't think about using Beast Wars Megatron, so maybe that's something I'll revisit uh, at a later date. Just because they both, both of their special abilities target going after the defenses themselves. 
just started thinking about that this morning. And also it kind of helped me out because I wasn't done with all my, all my Titan XP for the, for the week. So I said, I actually get to knock that out too. So I get to go in there and redistribute some of my, my Titan points, my Titan skill points. So yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I'm ready for it uh, in this particular case. Well, I'll start off. I'm going to use blot in this corner, in the corner where everything is. But I got Skull Smasher, so obviously I can line a bunch of defenses up in one in one shot. Maybe two shots. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm not going to use a second shot on that. I'm going to try to get as much range out of here as possible to clear out as much as possible. And I might not even need Cyber Screen, honestly. I'll go ahead, throw down another decor, see who comes out of that outpost, and just try to clear out as much of this stuff on one side as possible. But it shouldn't be an issue. Alright, they're working their way across. I uh, didn't really do a great job of pathing there, but I already knew I had to battle one, so I wasn't overly concerned about it. I don't know why anybody would design their base that way anyway, but unless they just wanted you to fight everything, but yeah, I mean, you're not really, not really striking fear in anybody's heart like that. And then really that's it. So like I said, the rest of the teams I'm going to be using I, at this point is where, and now I'm at the end and I would only have to use 27 uh, cyber coins on impactor. And then I could just use them to level, scrapper, drill horn, off road, so on and so forth. And I just gonna pick bots that I want to see leveled and that I want to get into my research lab. And I'll just keep using him over and over to try to make sure that I that I um I'm constantly playing anytime that I'm on the game. And then, you know, uh, obviously I still have additional coins and fuel cells from the twenty dollar bundles. But yeah, that's all I wanted to look over today. I wanted to share my practice that I'm using for the leaderboard with you guys. Um, you know, leave me a comment. How, how are you guys preparing for the event? Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know in Discord, too, if you guys haven't already joined me on Discord. Uh, my link is in the About section. I'll also leave a link in the comment section so that you guys can uh, follow with me, talk with me and some of my buddies down there in the discord server but other than that i'm gonna go ahead and relax a little bit before the big leaderboard event starts tomorrow and uh i'll see you guys out there good luck this weekend freezius out